right, in this particular video, uh, we're going to be taking a look at some simple graphs and how to use them in a science class. Uh, we're going to start off here talking about uh, bar graphs. And the way bar graphs are used is that they can show multiple categories and then whatever value of those categories you are looking at. So in the example I have here in on the graph uh, is we have four different cities which are labeled A, B, C, and D. And in each city we're separating out um, boys and girls. And so the boys are down here in black and the girls are over here in this gray color. And what we're looking at is the percentage employed um, that the teenagers are. So it goes from 0% to 80% or so. So if you look at this, and I asked you uh, in which city uh, do you have um, more girls employed than boys? And so you look for where the girls is higher, the girl bar graph is higher. And you can see here in city B, the girls is higher than the boys. Uh, the, another answer is D. In city D, the girls are um, uh, more employed than boys are. Um, I could ask, well, which city employs the fewest percentage of teenagers? And you would look at that and say, well, that's got to be city D because there's very few boys. There's less than 10% boys employed and maybe 10% or just over that of, of girls. And so it has the fewest employed boys and girls total. Well, what these bar graphs are used for is what we call chunking data. Um, we also call it grouping that data together. And you can compare sizes with these different ones. So we're comparing the size of percentage of employed students. What it doesn't allow you to do is to draw very many conclusions on this. You can't see cause and effect very easily on that. Why is city C the highest employed? Why is city D the least employed? Are there more businesses in city C? Um, was there some kind of natural disaster in city D? Um, maybe city D is having a, a high adult employment and so they're not needing to employ um, teenagers. There could be all kinds of reasons. It's hard to tell on the bar graphs. But you set your bar graphs up and you don't have to have two bars for these. You could, you know, compare as many things as you want. Usually you see them as one. Here we have an example of a bar graph that this person obviously didn't understand bar graphs at all. Uh, the size of the bar is supposed to represent the, the actual number. And so here you can see 13% is a lot higher than 34%. So what are we looking at here? Is, is Are the numbers right? Are the bar sizes right? It's, it's hard to tell what's going on here. It's kind of a hot mess. Uh, pie graphs are another one that you're going to see. And again, they're used for displaying percentages where the whole pie is 100% and then you throw your percentages in here. Uh, this is obviously in black and white, so it's a little bit hard to tell. But in general, the way the pie graphs are supposed to work is you start at 12 o'clock, which is up here at the top. And so this dark gray section is retail sales. And then the next section goes down the list here on food service. And so that's this lighter gray, 23%. Administrative support then is going around the other side. And so a good bar graph is going to be put together where the largest chunk is up here in the upper right quadrant. And each of these different chunks gets smaller and smaller. It doesn't have to be like that. But that's a general trend that you find. All right, but again, the problem with the pie graphs are we don't see cause and effect. Types of line graphs. Well, we're going to use these most often in science. We have an independent and a dependent variable comparison that can show some cause and effect, or at least what we might call correlations. Uh, the dependent variable goes on the x-axis. This is the thing that you're changing, um, or the thing that you're recording changing, and then you're seeing the responding variable uh, the what's so it's uh, happening here the dependent variable so it's dependent on the independent variable so independent variable down here and the dependent variable up here uh, if you ever have time let me go back here if you ever have time time goes on the x-axis all the time because it's the ultimate independent variable you can't change time here we have a graph uh, that shows two different lines on here and what we've done here is we have actually two different y-axes with uh, two different scales, the black and the blue. The black represents the speed in centimeters per second of whatever object this is. We'll say it's a rocket. 
and the blue line over here represents the height. And so we can look at speed and height of this particular rocket versus horizontal position. So how far away they are horizontally. So how far up are they and then how fast is that rocket going? So this is an example of you can have multiple lines on here. Um, and what you can do is you can show a lot of information on just one graph, but you have to have two different y axes. And they're both responding to the same independent variable, which is the position. Uh, let's take a look at this cause and effect here. So let's say I have thing one and thing two, and in general we got this line, and in general as we go from left to right on the horizontal axis, this line tem generally tends to increase. And so what you might say about this is that, well, thing two and thing one are related. As thing one increases, thing two also increases. And you might be led to say, well, that thing one is causing thing two to happen. And you got to be careful about that on these graphs, because just because you can graph these two things and it looks like they're related, sometimes maybe they're not. For instance, uh, in this case, let's say that our X and Y variables uh, we have ice cream sales over here on the horizontal axis and the vertical axis is number of violent crimes. This is a real graph. This actually happens in large cities um, throughout the year and throughout the United States. As you see ice cream sales and you say number of violent crimes increasing. Well, it's kind of a leap to say that ice cream sales are causing violent crimes to happen in these large cities. So you can't say that ice cream is causing people uh, to go out and commit crime. There's a relationship between the two, and if you stop to think about it, the relationship is about the weather. Ice cream sales are the highest when you get to certain months. So over here on the x-axis, your months would be the summer months, June, July, August. And they're at the lowest during the winter months, so you're talking about November, December, January over here on this end. In general, in the, especially in the northern hemisphere, that, that's a general trend. And so they both have a common link together, one not causing the other, but both of them actually being influenced by the weather. All right. Oh, sorry. We didn't leave that up there long enough. So what you can say is just because you can graph two things together, you, you can't just say that one causes the other. Those are tricky, trickier questions to, to answer. When you're graphing... You got to remember that the X is across, so sideways, horizontal, Y is up high on the Y axis. The independent variable is the variable that you manipulate. You change that, and that goes on the X axis. If you're timing something, time always goes on the X axis. The dependent variable is what responds. It's the effect, and this happens in response to you changing the X variable. When you draw your hand graphs, uh, make sure you label the X and Y axis. Make sure you put a title on the graph. Make sure your graph is as large as possible. And then I put a notation on here that whenever you're graphing with time, the x-axis is always time. All right, I hope that helps you, and you should have section one of your chapter one notes completed.